Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Filmspiration, the place where filmmakers come to get inspired. My name is writer, director, Red Rivarra. Let's get down to business. So, I've got a very, very special treat for you all. We have Mr. I'm Jack Bybee. And Jack, so, so Jack and I met, and first off, um, please excuse the audio because we're actually having some technical difficulties, but I'm pretty sure if we talk nice and strong, you can still hear us. Um, so Jack and I met when I put a call out to the, um, not to the audience, to, to the public in the filmmaking community almost a year ago now for two scenes in particular for my independent feature film, All We Have, still in post-production. And um, here, let me try to tilt down a little bit. And uh, Jack and many others graciously responded and said, you know what, hey, I want to be part of that story. That looks a little dark. Um, and they said, hey, I want to be part of that story. So that's how Jack and I met. And so, turns out, Jack, you are a writer. Uh, right. Aside from, you know, being background in my film, which I definitely do appreciate. So, Jack, for those of us who don't know you, talk to us a little bit about your background um, and how you came to the U.S., when, how that happened, etc. Sure. Uh, thank you, first of all, for having me. Uh, much obliged. I really You're very appreciate welcome, it. You're very welcome, my friend. Um, yes, I've got this damn full accent or so-called accent. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you lot have the accent, not me, but you know, <laughs> that's another matter. Um, I grew up in probably the most idyllic uh, situation and most beautiful part of the most beautiful country on the planet, the Western Cape of South Africa. Um, unfortunately, it was totally ruined by politics and apartheid, mm -hmm. and I couldn't tolerate the hurt that was being created mm -hmm. and uh, in 1982 the opportunity arrived I was offered a, I'd been in publishing and book selling and I was op offered an opportunity in Tennessee I took it and um, basically uh, to cut a very long story short uh, I'm now an American citizen, and what happened to me was what you often pray for, um, completely by accident. I, uh, I've been in publishing, as I said, and when I got to, to Atlanta, uh, I got hired to, to develop what became the largest computer technical business and scientific book section oh, in wow. the southeast. This was 1982-83, just as the Commodore 64 was coming out and the mm. things like that. And no one knew what a computer was. The yeah. internet hadn't been heard of. IBM, there was this damn fool little company called Apple Computer <laughs> somewhere, and they they might make it and they might not. Maybe, maybe they might not have, yeah. you know. You never so, know. Uh, so it's been a wonderful uh, thing in technology and while I was a bookseller and in South Africa my section in the Juta's bookstore in Cape Town was psychology, engineering, uh, education and business books. Um, and, and speaking of Jack, we have a, a contact of mine, Juan John, he's a local author. So we have a lot of local authors too, not just filmmakers yeah. that watch this. Juan John, hey what's up, how are you? So, and so I'm sorry, Jack, so right. I didn't continue. So, so, right. so Jack, there's, there's a lot of storytelling that goes on when, when it comes down to it, it's all storytelling, right? Sure. And, and it's many different forms of, uh, it, of the communication. Beto, hey, how are you, Beto? Um, so yeah, so, so talk to us about, you know, the power of storytelling and how story has, has played such an important part of your life and also has evolved in your life. Well, you know, if you want to go back to the um, the to my roots, the mm -hmm. mountains around my hometown in in the Western Cape are very much like these. I mean, it's I look at it all the time. In these mountains, the Drakenstein Mountains, there are caves, and on the rock faces of the caves oh. are where the Khoisan, what we so arrogantly call the Bushmen, yeah. they've painted their store their their images, the story they were telling, yeah. like in the caves of the so in France, their man, ancient man, was telling his story in art. Well, as, uh, storytelling, really, as Arist Aristotle said, has uh, just three acts, 
the beginning, the middle, and the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, Act One, Act Two, and Act Three, and uh, which goes, we, goes back to again Aristotle, ancient yeah, Greek. No, we've told stories now. It's t t television and v video. Before that, it was r r written, and yeah. before that, it was art. And and this is the sorry to cut to jump yeah. in, Jack. But this is one of the things I'm always telling people is if you're a storyteller, but you you're trying to find. Um, let me have you come this way, just a little jack if you can. If you're trying to find what medium works for you, I say try different things because from the dawn of time, from the beginning of man, if it was if it was um, paintings on the walls, right. if it was storytelling around the campfire, right. if it was smoke signals, if it was literature, if it was, let's, let's fast forward and, and go to the printing press yes. in the 1800s, 1700s, I think also. Yeah, 1700s. Um, if it was, if it was uh, radio, early 1900s, television, mid 1900s, the internet and now the internet as we know with all of its social media platforms yeah. ultimately what you have in different formats whether it be called television film journalism etc those are all different forms of communication yes. of storytelling right and that's I'm, I'm fascinated by that concept that it's all the same they're all different yeah. but it's all the same thing right so. I mean uh, I became a technical communicator a, t t a tech right yeah. completely by accident because I published a little catalog of computer books, mm -hmm. mailed it off to a magazine called Computer Shopper, yeah. and I got to write a, a monthly article on reviewing co computer books. Ah. And from that, yeah. I spoke to the editor one day and I said, do you think I could have an increase? He said, probably not, but <laughs> uh, uh, why don't you become a technical writer? Yeah. And I said, what on earth is that? He says, it's doing exactly what you're doing. You're taking a complex technical scenario, like a computer book, uh -huh. and turning it into words that the reader will understand. So yeah, an, an, an understandable and, communication language. And then he said, he went on to say, by the way, you, your article, your monthly article, is the second highest uh, read really? in, in the magazine. Wow. After the IBM column. IBM in those days was the, the be all and end all. Yeah. But to get to story, <laughs> we all have a story to tell. I, I, I'm convinced of that. Jack, let me cut you off, and I just want to say hello. Speaking of communication, communicating to people, said hi to Beto, Stephen, Stephen, how are you? Alan Ryan, thank you for tuning in. Jim Hayes, thank you for tuning in. Daniel Arturo Lopez, Danny, how you doing, man? Uh, Alan says, always enjoy your interviews, keep the faith. Brother, thank you so much, because, I, and it's ironic that we're talking about communications, because ironically enough, I've always wanted to tell the stories of the storytellers. Jack is a storyteller. And um, we're doing the communication on a cell phone. Audio is not that great, had some technical difficulties with the microphones, but we still needed to get the storytelling out there. And that's why we do it because, you know, I, I not only want to watch the movies of the independent filmmakers in my community around me, but I also want to hear their stories, who they are, what they've got to say, how they got to the point, to this point in their lives of where they're at. Marcus Wilson, you got Marcus Wilson. Oh, right he's there. Hello, Hi, Marcus. Yes, keep the faith. Love is power. Yes, it is, brother. Marcus, how are you, man? Marcus, I hope to meet you one of these days, bro, in person. I really, really do. That I'd be honored. Jesus Lopez, thank you so much for watching. So, um, so basically, so you start off with technical writing, right? And then you eventually said, so, so talk to us about your father and how. What was it? Somebody, uh, somebody uh, wrote uh, a book, or you wrote a book? No, I, my, uh, my grandfather uh -huh. landed up in South Africa. Oh, okay. And, and okay. he did. He married eventually my grandmother, who came from England, who came to find the. Rudyard Kipling used to go from, who lived very close to my grandmother in England, mm -hmm. always used to go to Cape Town in South Africa oh, okay. for, uh, over the winter holidays, go to South Africa, it's the middle of summer. Mm -hmm. 
She, my grandma was enamored with Rudyard Kipling. I used to be on her knee and she would read me the just so stories, how the leopard mm. got its spots, uh, all these things, how the elephant got its trunk, ah. all, all these wonderful things. Um, but what happened was my grandfather was living on a homestead in Iowa. Okay. Uh, he, he got a note from uh, a relative, I need your help in San Francisco. So he packed his bags, left right, from the... From Iowa to San Francisco. Yeah, okay. right. Left, left uh, San, uh, went to San Francisco, had um, a carpentry box on his shoulder because he was a carpenter. Mm -hmm. Before he knew it, he, everything went black. He, and he w woke up on uh, on a sailing ship because they needed a carpenter. Wow! He'd never seen an ocean before. Yeah. He'd never. He, all of a sudden, he was uh, forced labour, yeah. and he. They went around uh, uh, um, the Straits of Magellan, uh, Cape Horn, mm -hmm. uh, got hit by a tsunami in the middle of the South Atlantic. Uh, and then to use uh, my grandpa's words, we persuaded the captain to head for the nearest shore. In other words, <laughs> my grandfather's a mutineer. <laughs> That's anyway, funny. So, uh, so he lived quite a life, basically. Yeah, well, he didn't want to. He wanted to be on the farm in Iowa. Wow. He, he didn't want any of it. Uh, uh, and so I've written this book based on a lot of research mm -hmm. that I've done and uh, a relation of mine here uh, did a great deal of uh, an, um, anthology mm -hmm. of, uh, of the Bybee uh, people Cam here in, uh, in the United States and uh, based on that I wrote the Journal of Rudd, my grandfather's middle name, oh, okay. R-U-D-D. But the problem was, it. you know the name Nancy Turner, the yes. author? Yes. Uh, she wrote a, a wonderful book about Arizona, uh, These Is My Words. I told... It sounds, it rings yeah, a bell. It right, a it's bell. a very good book yeah, about her grandmother who lived in Arizona. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and uh, how the University of Arizona got started and all the stuff. Really? Yeah, wow. these is my words. Wow. It, it's a journal as if her grandmother had the written it. Well, I told Nancy what I've just told you, mm -hmm. and she stood in class and she nearly choked on her Coke at lunchtime. Write it, Jack, write it. <laughs> so, so it took me nine and a half years going through Pima and the university. The the Journal of Rudd. R U D D. The Journal of Rudd. It's okay. a, let me let me say hello. Sorry to cut you off again, uh, Eugene. If you're still watching, Eugene, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Really loved, really enjoyed talking to you, brother. Eugene, you talking about like when I had you on the show because I enjoyed talking to you, man. Because it's it's people like yourself, Jack, the many many others that I've had on Filmspiration that. I want to hear who you guys are as human beings, your people, your people, your experiences as people and whatnot. And so, I mean, thank you, brother. I really do appreciate it. Robert Linden, actor and action actor, Robert Linden, straight out of Hollywood. Can't wait to do another video. I'm going to say to do another video. Yeah, man. When are you like, let's get together, Eugene, whenever you can, brother, because you know what? Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I just made the screen disappear. It's all about it's all about um, hearing what you guys have to say. So, Jack, you wrote the Journal of Rudd, right? And um, how many pages was it? If you don't Ooh, mind my asking, um, three, five hundred? Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, about two, two fifty. It's, okay. Uh, it's on Amazon. Uh, I okay. there's just one little edit I've got to do for the very a ending. The problem was I wrote it as if my grandfather had written it. So I had oh, to okay. teach myself yeah. American. I don't speak American, I speak English. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I had to learn the words that my grandfather w would use in 1897. Oh, okay. He was born in 1882, so he was 15 or 16 years old. Especially in, in I think it's the Midwest where I was at. Um, yeah. I think it's considered the Midwest. You're gonna have different slang, different yeah, terms. I, I know, I know, so, I know. 
Eugene, will do, my dear friend. You're awesome. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Uh, Alfonso Bautista, thank you so much for coming aboard. You got quite an audience. Oh, yeah, well, so. that's good. That's good. So at, at some point, so you wrote you wrote the, the Journal of Rudd, which is the story of your grandfather. Right. And all of his journeys and his amazing life. And I know I'm not doing it justice in just summarizing it right now. You said it's on Amazon, right? It's on Amazon now. The Journey of Rudd, Amazon, written by yours truly, Mr. Jack Baby. Baby, Baby, sorry about Thank that. You. <laughs> David, David Faye, <laughs> how are you? See, I screw up names too, Jack. Well, you see from that... Uh, someone here in Tucson said, you've written uh, such a good book, uh -huh. why don't you do, uh, write the screenplay? So I taught uh -huh. myself how to write screenplays. So yeah, then he yeah. looked at it and, uh, uh -huh. uh, and he said, oh, it's such a good screenplay, why don't you produce it? <laughs> mm. uh, well, that, did, that hasn't happened. I'm looking for, it's too big a production for me, yeah. but I'm looking for, for a producer there. Yeah. You know, but then there's this other uh, thing I told you about uh, Yopi's journey. Yes, yes, and that's so, and that was the one that you were just doing recently, right? And yes. so, um, talk to us about the transition from literature to screenplay, because in literature you basically get to play God with all the details you get to go into. Yes. In screenplay, it has to be very much structured in a more bland way, but because the real magic happens when the actors and actresses yes, step exactly. in and, and bring those characters exactly. to life, right? And did, that, did you have a hard time with the transition? I am still having that, but uh, away from Yopi's journey on, uh, on Friday night, I was uh, house-sitting for some uh, friends. Mm -hmm. I uh, sat I down yeah, you, you and I that. just wrote and I think it's one of the best little short stories I've written in a long time. I'll post it. Oh, if you have it, you have my permission to post it to... Uh, if you'd like, if you'd yeah, like, because yeah, I, I remember you, you did send me the PDF. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jack, what do you say to all the people out there who, you know, maybe they're not an aspiring actor or actress. Maybe they're not the film director or the cameraman, the editor. Maybe they're not those people, but they. we all have an idea because we've all had... Um, a lot of uh, life experience, right. some more than others. But what do you say to the people out there who say, you know, I got an idea, but what do I do with this, or can I turn this into a story? What's your response? The first thing I would say is go to a, a, a good store, get a couple of uh, wire-bound notebooks yeah. and a pencil. Okay. That's how storytelling began. Yep. That uh, you write it down. Yep. You write. You can create a mind map if you want to, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, get your own n n notebook. If you don't write it down, yeah. that you cross speedway as I often do, and you you could get run down by the time you, if you haven't yeah. uh, written it down, you know, and, and you get hit by a car. It's gone. All your life experience, all your memories are gone. Yeah, uh, that's true. Write it down and write it down uh, uh, as often as you can. What, what's your, from your experience, what medium do you enjoy most? Do you enjoy the screenplay writing, the actual filmmaking, or more of literary writing? All three and more. Really? Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm okay. loving, uh, I'm loving uh, directing my little uh, trailer at the moment. It's really, uh, art is one thing, uh, uh, creative or, or writing is not is another thing, um, but movie making, uh, which is my very first attempt, um, uh, uh, honestly, it draws on a creativity yeah. that is not that uh, that isn't uh, evoked in the other two media uh, forms of creativity. And and that that takes us to a very important aspect of all of this. People ask me like, well, you know, I, or I've heard people say, well, well literature is better. No, film is better. And, and no, no, my no. my opinion is that not one is not better than the no, other. You're right. There are different life forms. Yeah. They have different life forms, and so a movie is going to give you an experience a book can't, but a book is going to give you an experience yeah. a film can't. A lot of times. And and what do we always hear? Oh, the book was better. Well, I've been literature. in publishing. <laughs> I, I, I'm a bookseller. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you expect me to yeah. say? But uh, 
uh, one of the uh, uh, the tricks I learnt. Um, uh, Julia Cameron, the the girl who wrote *The Artist's Way*. Uh, okay, she, I've heard of them. Yeah, book. right. She said, "When, um, as I'm falling asleep at night, I repeat the mantra." I open my mind to all the creativity I need. That, mm -hmm. for me, that works. I ask. Mm -hmm. uh, ask whatever power you believe in, every higher power. Mm -hmm. Ask for that input. And then the trick is to listen. Yeah. It, it's all very well to pray, to meditate, to whatever. To talk. I walk and talk to myself. I'm still asking uh, questions. The trick is, do you listen for the answer? And that's a very good point because you know what? I think a lot of times, out of feeling lost, a lot of times in the arts, we'll, we'll ask, well, what direction should I go? Should I go uh, this way? Should I go that way? What is the right way to go? Uh, and a lot of times... I think because of that, people don't even stop and maybe ask themselves if they should be just kind of maybe doing this yeah, and just kind of listening, closing yeah. your eyes and listen to what's inside. And so, you know, when, when I think, I think it's when you listen that, and, and you're, and you're just still and you listen, call it maybe like you said, prayer, yeah. meditation, when you do that listening, then it comes to you naturally. And I think. Well, in, in my experience, I've had a lot of writer's block. Yeah. Um, let me see. I think I had a... Oh, David Fay. Yes. Yeah, so that was a, still the last comment. I've had a lot of writer's block. Right. It wasn't writer's block. What, what the problem was, I was trying to force yes. the story. Yeah, exactly. Here's the funny part, Jack. The, the feature film, all we have from last year that I'm still yeah. editing... I had been working from about 2009 to 2016, about seven Ooh. years on a, on a story, right? And I was, admittedly, I was forcing it. Yeah. And it was taking forever. It yeah. was not working. Right. And then the concept for the feature film All We Have came to me. And that just kind of, poly, poly we're, we're So glad I caught this. Polly, thank you so much. I appreciate it. How are you? Polly, are you a writer, actress, actor? Um, where are you in the scope of things? We want to know. Um, I basically, like, when that story came to me the way it did, mm -hmm. because of an experience that I had, I, it was an emotional journey for a bunch of hours, and then during work hours, and then I got off of work, went to dinner with my wife that night, I was so impacted by yeah. what I experienced that number one, there was the experience and I expressed that to her. But number two, I thought, wow, the story is right there. Yeah. yeah. It just wrote itself. It just, well, it, it, the that's story what was happened right on there. Friday yeah. night. Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I sat down with the final prof, the, the screenplay, and I just said, I don't know where I'm going. Just let me think. Polly, sorry to cut you off, Jack. Polly says, wonderful, I'm a fan of Jack's. Oh. <laughs> Jack, you got a fan, brother. Thank you, Polly, thank you so much for... Oh, Polly! Uh, Hello, Polly! <laughs> Polly, thank you so much for tuning in. Well, I, I really, really do appreciate it because uh, here in Filmspiration, this is, this is the whole point. It's about telling the stories of the storytellers. Please forgive the audio. It's not that bad. We, don't, we had a little technical issue with the microphones, different phone, but... Um, but thank you for tuning in because it's about the stories that the storytellers have to say. So I really do appreciate your comments. Let me tell you a story about Polly. Okay. Uh, she is in the, in Alaska. We've never met, but she's we've been in touch on the internet. A, oh really? A, a wonderful, intuitive, uh, uh, and helpful person. Yeah. And she's moving here to Arizona very shortly. Really? So maybe she can come on your show and she can talk to yeah. you about that. You hear that, Polly? <laughs> Definitely. Polly, welcome to Tucson. Whenever you get here, it's going to be a little, a little warmer, but that's kind of about it. Just drink a lot of water. You'll be great. Looking forward to meeting you, Polly. Um, uh, where uh -huh. were we? Um, movie making. Um, I, in my near-death experience, which happened in 1972 in mm -hmm. South Africa, because I was trying to get out of away from apartheid and mm -hmm. double pneumonia and one thing and another, oh, I flatlined. Okay. But on the other side, 
I wanted to stay. I didn't want to go back to apartheid or anything like that. And perfect love is everywhere. And no, your time has not yet come. Your race has not yet run. You must return. You have life lessons to learn. I like well, that. I that, like that. Well, yeah. that's what I was told. And the lesson, the one lesson I learned on the other side, mm -hmm. the, the, don't argue with God, you won't win. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, that's one lesson I, I, anyway, I tried arguing, it didn't work. Um, and back I came. But when I said, or thought, spoke, uh, how will I know what to do? How will I know where to go? And the answer was, ask, and it shall be manifested unto you. I like that, yeah. Ask. It's, and then, uh, and now the lesson I've real, realized, a lesson for the answer. The answer is always there. Yeah. You just have to listen for to it. Listen. I like that. And, and there's actually, uh, Anita, Anita, hi, how are you? Anita, um, There, so there's a saying in Spanish. Let me say it in Spanish first. It says, Si quieres que Dios se ría, cuéntale tus planes. Which means, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Because <laughs> well, they're not your plans. They're, they're, not, they're, your not, plans. they're not your plans. <laughs> <laughs> they're never really your plans. Yeah. And so that's well, why he's going to laugh. So, But you see, as I'm trying, the book I'm trying to finish, Memories of Eternity, and what you've suggested, a, a, a podcast on that. I, that might still happen, but this book it has been hanging. I just got to get the final thing done. Yeah. But w w uh, the interesting thing for me, I think, uh, I'm reasonably certain about this, that people are discovering the p p black holes and yeah. you know, yeah. all this astrophysics stuff. The thing is, Death consciousness, which is a term Pum van Rommel used in, he was a cardiologist in Amsterdam and he wrote a wonderful paper that was published in The Lancet on, he did a proactive study on people, uh, patients who could have a heart attack mm. and then they had their heart attack and then he f followed up. And, oh, okay. Uh, and that he from that he described a death consciousness, and in death consciousness, which is what happens to to the spirit when you when the spirit uh, transitions, I'm certain it's a quantum existence, because you I could uh, think a thought. And it would happen. In fact, I did. That's how I begin the memories of eternity, because I was raised in South Africa in the in the Protestant uh, Christian oh, okay. uh, church, and nothing, nothing prepared me for what uh, I experienced on the other side. I get to the other side. I said, "What place is this?" Where am I now? And a voice answered, this is what you call heaven. And then my next thought was, how did this all begin? And instantly, there was a purple void, and there was a tiny molecule coming from, from the right of the picture plane, and here was a little orange molecule coming from the left mm. and the two molecules collided. Mm. If you look at my art, the colors of the Big Bang mm -hmm. are reflected in my art because okay. that's what I saw, reds and oranges and russets mm. and yellows in, the, uh, in a mighty explosion. Wow. But uh, as I pested uh, a librarian in South Africa. Hi Mina, how are you Mina? Love you. Uh, I pestered the, the, remember this is 1972, right? Up, uh, as apartheid was raging. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was forbidden to talk about it because only a duomini in a church can can commune with God. You know, you've got no... Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. So no, they, no. So they, they, they didn't like that. No, they didn't like that. I said, but okay, I can understand where the one molecule came from. But where did the other one come from? 
That's a question. But a big bang happened. I mean, if I say this out, oh God, I'm on, yeah, I'm on camera. <laughs> but if I say this out loud, as I just have, people think I'm nuts. Yeah, a lot of you know. I I think I think it's a, it's it's a deeply personal topic. In, yes. in that, but that has to be respected, because everyone has you know they they might have different thoughts and 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 beliefs and whatnot, but. Um, you know, di different people experience different things, and I think they're to be re uh, respected. And um, you know, as long as you're not trying to encroach upon anybody else, or having the audacity to you know go really far with your thoughts, where yeah. they're going to encroach upon somebody else. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's all like um, very, very fascinating, Jack. And so, um, Jack, just to close out, and I'm really sorry. I, I apologize to to be the rusher this time, but. With regards to storytelling, let's go back to that. Yeah, sure. If there's one final message, so so right now, what are you up to? Because you said um, you're doing a trailer, right? Yes. You're, you're also doing a trailer, and so talk to us about the trailer very briefly. So you're making you're making a trailer, right? Yeah, right. Uh, the thing is, <laughs> I've just begun, uh, as I said, screenplay writing, mm -hmm. and now I want to. Uh, turn this uh, the screenplay into a movie. Yep. I'm do it's not a low budget movie. It's a no budget movie. Yeah. And, and I have some wonderful actors, and it's all come together. I said it's non union, non you know, no pay, nothing. Um, uh, uh, von Issa is my lead actress. Heather uh, Serrano. Uh, mm. uh, she's here at uh, yeah. uh, third from the right, yeah. and. Uh, Anyway, she's the main character uh, in the trailer, mm. but um, it, it, um, the, the the trailer you want to use to raise funds for the actual film yes, or that's the thing short is uh, to crowd fund the actual movie, which is it, always a good idea because you're helping people, you're giving them a story to, you're not asking them to imagine, you're saying like, hey, here's the concept, yep. you know, and then it, so once they see it, then you know, I think it's a great idea. Well, uh, I hope it works, but um, uh, the thing is, I did, uh, I love creating the B story, the backstory research, mm -hmm. using my t t t technical uh, writing skills mm -hmm. and doing research into the backstory. Mm -hmm. And I found that um, in South Africa, the Boer and the, the, the apartheid people, in the Boer War of 19, 1902, mm -hmm. um, that there was a very true, tragic story that the Afrikaner has that I poo pooed in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And the thing, that, uh, the catalyst, I was on w w Wikipedia about a 18 months ago, mm -hmm. and I was looking for Boer War and this and that. And I saw an image that it, it was obviously in a tent, mm -hmm. in a concentration camp, and it mm -hmm. was a skeleton lying on a camp bed. And the only thing that told me looking at this image that the skeleton was alive was that the eyes were looking out of the corner at the camera. Oh. And then I realized there's a story to tell yeah. in this. The, uh, maybe the Africana had a point after all. Yeah. Maybe there's another side to the coin of apartheid. I didn't give apartheid a chance. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, no, uh, wait a minute. Maybe they do have a story. And that is what I'm doing. Uh, the trailer is all about uh, Yopi, who evolves as uh, she's ostracized, she's kicked out of the tent mm -hmm. because she's born a child uh, conceived with an African man and um. of course that is totally forbidden yeah. and she's ostracized from there well I've got to write the rest of it <laughs> but that's the trailer a uh, little shout out to uh, Sh excuse me Sean, Sean Barubi thank you so much for tuning in brother I appreciate it uh, just a closing final message with regards to the people again out there who so many different mediums to tell stories, you know, either verbally, video, uh, podcast, drawing, painting, writing, literature, etc. What do you tell the, the person who's maybe looking or just has an idea? 
Write it down. That's the first thing. Yeah. And uh, right from your experience, you draw, you've got, you, the potential author, the writer, has more within you than you will ever uh, realize at yeah. the moment. Because as soon as you start writing, you'll realize, oh, now I know this, and oh, yeah. that reminds me of that, and uh, who, what, where, when, why, and how. The five W's of nature. Yeah. Uh, you, you want to create a good uh, um, non-fiction article, who, what, where, when, why, and how, and the same for fiction. You go in, you ask these questions, and open your mind, open to input, mm -hmm. and but keep writing and write regularly. Uh, in fact, ideally, you begin by writing your short story and you write another short story and you write another short story. After a while, you've got a chapter or two chapters. Yeah. Uh, you know what I did when I was at Pima? I'd never experienced a, a, an American time for summertime. I, I, everybody oh, goes yeah. away on yeah. vacation. I never had that. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's summertime. I said, what the hell do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> you, you see? So uh, I will wake up the first couple of mornings I wake up. Oh, I, it's vacation. Okay. Then I took myself off to a coffee shop yeah. with my wirebound notebook mm -hmm. and a pen. And I wrote every morning from like the time the coffee shop opened till about 9, 9.30 uh, or 10 o'clock, a long hand wow. uh, in my notebook. I go to the university, I typed it up, expanded it. Mm -hmm. Hello, let's do it again next morning and the next morning. Yeah. By the end of the summer vacation, I had a book. It's called, um, oh God, I just forgot, uh, <laughs> Climbing Beyond the Edge of the Ledge, Mountaineering in South Africa and really? Nepal. Little short so, stories. So, so here, Jack, you're saying, if you got an idea, write it down, a little every day, it always adds up. And Consistency. Don't. Keep writing. Consistency. Uh, yeah. Set a daily goal, two pages, three pages, mm -hmm. and write it and every single day. And don't stop. Uh, yes, because yeah. uh, the, the more you write, the better you write. Cool. Well, Jack, thank you so much for uh, coming on Filmspiration, bud. I really do appreciate it, sir. Thank you, Edgar. Um, I really appreciate the, yeah. the you know, the and, chance. And um, Jack, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you up for your information. If yeah. anybody wants to reach out to you for any reason, and whatever information you'd like to give me, or maybe not, sure. um, well, I'll go ahead and put it in the description once I download, then repost the video. Sure. Um, and then and then afterwards, that way people can write to you if you guys are interested in reaching out to Jack. For um, you know, tips on writing. Sure. Maybe I don't know if you do lessons or tutoring, Jack. But um, you know, so that way, that way you guys can reach out to Jack and um, you know. Just one thing, if you don't uh, mind, uh, I've got a hearing issue. I'd far prefer uh, you send me an email, uh, Jack Bybee, period writer at gmail.com. Uh, yeah. uh, Edgar will. Put it up. Yeah, we'll put it in, in the body of the description. Daniel, hey, thanks for the heart. Roger Harmon, good example of discipline. That's true. And I hear Stephen King practices the exact same thing every single day. Gets up, what? writes, what? writes. He's, writes. Listened, he's, he, he's listened to me? Stephen King? He's yeah, listening. yeah, yeah. He, he took your advice. That's how he started writing Karen's. In okay, the <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, everyone, run out there, do your thing. In Jack's case, it's been literature. You, you ventured into screenplays. Now you're producing a... Uh, a, a trailer right. to crowdfund for a short or a feature? A big one. For the, so the money would be for a short or a feature? Uh, for a feature. A feature. Okay. And, and if you don't mind me saying so, I'm open to receiving any used uh, movie making equipment. Yeah. You know, yeah. If, if anybody out there has lights or audio recorder or boom pole, mm -hmm. pardon me using this. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, let me know. If, if you guys, so, so, so Jack needs help. If anyone knows anybody else who has, you know, some equipment, some used equipment that maybe Jack can use for a day or two or for a weekend or whatnot to help him or get the, uh, or a camera or a camera. Um, then yeah, please reach out to Jack. Again, we're going to put his email in the body of the description once I repost the video. Uh, and, and you guys, this goes back to, um, 
the age-old message that I have for you guys. Uh, Mirna, hey, what's up? How are you? This goes back to the age-old message that I have for you all. If you got an idea, obviously my realm has been filmed. Jack, you come to us from literature and you're, you're stepping into the film realm. But run out there. Do your thing. Tell your story. If you have a story to tell, run out there. Do your thing. If you have a higher power, consult your higher power. Beyond that, don't ask for anyone's blessing, anyone's permission. Tell your stories. And oh, and if you need help, resources, videos, you can go to the University of YouTube. Uh, it's yes, free. The University, of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> University of YouTube is free, no tuition. Just get, uh, you know, it's literally in the palm of your hand. Um, you can learn everything there, everyone. Especially uh, literary writing, film directing, film directing. Run out there and do it, everyone. Jack, anything else you'd like to add, sir? No, that's it as far as I'm concerned. You, you, you're about to push the pause button within me. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Okay, so everyone, Thanks, thank you everybody. so much uh, for tuning in. My name is Writer Director Ed Rivara. This has been Jack Baby. Bye, B. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's okay. And I already did that twice within the video. And this has been Filmspiration. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, hit like on the uh, Facebook page, please. I'll love you forever. Twitters, the Instagrams, the YouTubes, all of that stuff is going to be in the body description as well, as well as Jack's information, how you can reach out to him. Everyone, thank you so much. Love you guys all. Appreciate it a lot. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Alles von dir Beste.